Say it again. Hi. <laughs> Say it again. No. Come on. No. <laughs> She's bragging on me for a second. No, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Tell him. No. Oh, come on, Marcia. Just one time. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it looks like we're getting this, something coming in. That winds, we got a lot of big puffy clouds moving in. And it's black that way. Is it? Yep, yeah, it's coming. I'm we're not talking supposed to. to Sterling today. He said they got a big hurricane going to hurry up into the south part of Texas. I guess it's got a name to it. The first one they've named this year. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <clears throat> but, yep, we have pretty blue skies with all these clouds, sun shining. It's usually blue. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We usually can't see it. Yeah. But we do today. It looks pretty up there through the holes. Pretty blue. Anyway, we got a good one today. These are always good. Today's, what is today? Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Figure June it out. June the 18th. 18th. <laughs> Tell them what you said. Was no! <laughs> it wasn't about you anyway. Oh, it was. No, it wasn't. No, no. You know, like you're, you're like that bird that pooped on my knee. Them little. A pain. <laughs> Uh. Okay. <laughs> Just. Are you ready? Oh, I like your fingernails. Thank you. And not your shirt. No, they don't. They're this pink. is red and this is pink. Let's see, hold them like this. Let me see. You look pretty. Yeah. This is red and my fingernails are pink. You and Jackie both wore, wore purple the other day. Oh, really? Oh. Rick's seen that. He pointed that out. We got people to watch. Anyway, see what we got today. Are you done talking? Not even close. <laughs> All right. Hello, dear brothers and sisters, deeply loved by the happy God. From Unsearchable Riches, Volumes 110, page 16, A. E. Knock writes, in part, perhaps no better evidence can be offered for the deflection, the defection of the church from the spirit of humility promoted by Philippians than the change from supervisor to bishop and from plain servant to deacon or minister. It is evident that the latter term once meant no more than a servant or our translators would not have rendered Matthew 20, 26, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. In Matthew 20, 311 they translated the name the same word servant some of the functions of these deacons or ministers are keeping house like Martha and Luke 10 4 drawing water in John 2 9 and especially used of those who are waited on who waited on the table at meals Luke 22 uh, verse 7 and Acts 6 verse 2 hence it also has a sense of serving or dispensing it refers to lowly duties not dignified display I w will remember my first experience as a deacon the office fell to my lot without appointment or election my duties consisted of cleaning out the meeting place each week and I had others to do such things for me in business and at home but that I considered it an honor to perform such a service as to the Lord it gave me much joy and and satisfaction. In the back of the CNLT, page 265, the word servant, the Greek element is dikonos. I think so. I think I see it. <clears throat> Servants of persons and dispenser of things. It shows that it is not the special title of the church official. Magistrates are also deacons or ministers. It also shows that the terms minister and deacon are equivalents in the scriptures, though they are far apart in modern ecclesial usage. 
every deacon is really a minister and every minister is a deacon. To escape with such confusion, the concordant version avoids ecclesiastical terms whenever possible. It has made servants out of deacons and ministers. Hmm. That's something. <clears throat> Minister is used in the authorized version at all times for another Greek word. Lit your your lit your ghost. The I Toro ghost means people act, for which it is more ap appropriate, and the Kogoda version follows this example, as it also. It is also a form of service, which the Philippians, as a whole, rendered to Paul through Ephroditus. Although such ministers have no permanent place in the church order, the term was applied only on special occasions when some public service was performed. The word minister is literally people actor. It means people's minister is people actor. One who acts for other people, who officiates. Thus, it is used four times of the priesthood in Luke, in Hebrews, uh, Luke 1, 23, in Hebrews 8, chapter 8, verse 2, chapter 9, verse 21, and chapter 10, verse 11. That could be mama. People actor? Yeah. Taking care of people. Mm -hmm. A priest ministers, ministers or officiates. When Paul acted as a priest of the evangel of God, he was a minister in Romans 15, 16. Paul was not the minister of Philippi. On the contrary, the Philippines, or the, Philippians. the Philippians were ministers of Paul, said Philippians 2, 17 and Philippians 2, 30. This consisted of the supply of his temporal needs. They had failed in, in this stuff until Ephrodite was sent to minister to Paul for them. Looking up servants in the back of our CLNT, we find servants are to be grave. They are to be honest, not double-tongued, which is saying two contradictory things, um, too laid, not to be addicted to much wine, toward have, heed giving attendance at being given to much wine, not Ferocious, vile gainer, not having, not given to filthy liquor or gain. <clears throat> In Unsearchable Riches, volume 96, pages 63 and 267, we have a great article written by Tony Nonsucker. The first to refer specifically to conscience was this Apostle Paul. Of the 32 times cons conscience appeared in the New Testament, he mentions it 22 times. Oh, in the 32 times conscience appeared in the New Testament, he mentions it 22 times. The conscience can be weak and thus polluted, 1 Corinthians 8, 7, and 12. And defiled, Titus 1, 15. One can have a good conscience 1 Timothy 1, 5, 19, 1 Peter 3, 16, and 21, as well as have a clear conscience, 1 Timothy 3, 9, 2, oh, wait a minute, 1 Timothy 3, 9, and 2 Timothy 3, 1, 3. It is also possible that people's conscience can be Carterized. 1 Timothy 4 2. One's conscience can be cleansed, Hebrew 4 19, and be figuratively wicked, Hebrews 10 22. One can also possess an ideal conscience, Hebrews 13 18. That's interesting. <clears throat> I had thought about how many times the different ways of saying, of using the word conscience. The conscience is that which recognizes what is right. However weak or categorized, 
it will be called upon to testify concerning mankind in the day when God will be judging the hidden things of humanity according to Paul's evangel through Christ Jesus, Romans 2, 15 and 16. The Greek element of the Greek word, or the element of the Greek word command is uh, sonistis, son, sonistima, sonistima, S-U-N-I-S-T-E-M-I. Well, you know, I could never say it after you start messing up. <laughs> I know. Uh, and Alicia broke that apart so I could pronounce it. Son, still didn't get it. I, S, T, I have no idea. It means they're having other uses are have cohesion, cohere, stand together. Uh, Paul and those with him were manifestations of the, by manifestation of the truth, commending themselves to every man's conscience. Every man's conscience, when presented with the true evangel of the glory of Christ will stand together with it. The conscience is a strong ally of faith. Often, the Apostle Paul would join the two in the same breath. For instance, now the consummation of the charge is love out of a clean heart and a good conscience and unfeigned faith, which some, swerving, were turned aside into vain pratting. 1 Timothy 1, 5. Having a having faith and a good conscience with some thrusting away have made shipwreck as to the faith in 1 Timothy 1 19 having the secret of the faith in a clear conscience 1 Timothy 3 9 having the secret of the faith in a clear conscience yeah, 1 Timothy 3 9 now the spirit is saying explicitly that in subsequent eras some will be withdrawing from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and the teaching of demons and the hypocrisy of false of false expressions, their own conscience having been cauterized, first Timothy four cauterized. One and two. We can see from the above verses that faith the faith in the evangel and a good conscience were utmost important. Fortunes. In fact, Paul often gave stress to his conscience and that of others in relation to service concerning himself he wrote grateful am i god to whom i am offering divine service for my ancestors with a clear conscience second timothy 1 3 the debar translation has this for first timothy 3 8 through 10 servants similarly are not to be double warded not attending too much wine, not greedy for shameful gain, but having the mystery of faithing and of clean conscience. But let those also be examined before, thereafter let them serve being unindictable. unindictable. Hmm. We use the concordant literal for these studies and references. Let's search through the treasures we find in Paul's evangel for t us today. All right. Now we get into the references for 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 10. And I'll leave them below the video, as usual, you'll find down there. Servants, similarly, are to be grave. Means, grave means to be honest. Not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not a varicus, means given to filthy gain, having the secret of the faith and a clear conscience. Now let these also first be tested, Thereafter, let them be serving, being unimpeachable. Now here's the references for that. I'm conjuring in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the chosen messengers that you should guard these things apart from prejudice, doing nothing from bias. On no one be placing hands too quickly, nor yet be participating in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. For those who serve ideally are procuring for themselves an ideal rank and much boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things I'm writing to you, though expecting, expecting to come to you more quickly. Yet, if I should be tardy, that you may be perceiving how one must behave in God's house, 
which is the ecclesia of the living God, the pillar and base of truth. And the valley great is the secret of devoutness, which was manifested in flesh, justified in spirit. I could be a devout, but I don't think I can behave. You have a rough time behaving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where was I at? Avowedly great is the secret of devoutness. Oh. Which is manifested in flesh, justified in spirit, seen by messengers, heralded among the nations, believed in the world, taken up in glory. That's where I was at. You know, won't be long. We'll be taken up in glory. I'll be glad. Yeah. And we'll be seen by messengers. Wow. Yeah. We're held in Christ among the nations now worldwide. The whole world we're being we're held in. According as the testimony of Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not deficient in any grace, awaiting the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will be confirming you also until the consummation, unimpeachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the consummation of the charge is love out of a clean heart and a good conscience and unfeigned faith, from which some swerving were turned aside into vain pratting, wanting to be teachers of the law, not apprehending either what they are saying or that or that concerning which they are insisting. And you, being estranged and enemies in comprehension by wicked acts, yet now he reconciles by his body of flesh through his death to present you holy and flawless and unimpeachable in his sight, having a having faith and a good conscience, which some, thrusting away, have made shipwreck as to the faith. Hmm. Faithful is the saying and worthy of all welcome. For this are we toiling and being reproached, that we rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. These things be charging and teaching. Let no one be despising your youth, but become a model for the believers in word, in behavior, in love, in faith, in purity, till I come. Give heed to reading, to entry, to teaching. Neglect not the gracious gifts which is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the imposition of the hands of the eldership. On these things meditate. In these be that your progress may be apparent to all. Attend to yourself and to the teaching. Be persisting in them, for in doing this you will save yourself as well as those hearing you. I am thanking my God at every remembrance of you, always in every petition of mine for all, making the petition with joy. For your contribution to the evangel from the first day until now, having this same confidence that he who undertakes a good work among you <laughs> yep. will be performing it until the day of Christ. We are giving no one cause to stumble in anything, lest flaws be found in the faith. But in everything we are commending ourselves as servants of God in much endurance, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. Wow. For the supervisor, the supervisor must be unimpeachable as an administrator of God, not given to self gratifications, not irritable, no talker, not quarrelsome, not avaricious, but hospitable, fond of that which is good, saying just, benign, self controlled. For our treaty is not out of deception, nor yet out of uncleanliness, nor yet with guile, but according as we have been tested by God to be entrusted with the evangel, thus are we speaking, not as pleasing men, but God, who is testing our hearts. For by revelation the secret is made known to me, this is Paul, according as I write before in brief, by which you who are reading are able to apprehend my understanding in the secret of the Christ, which in other generations is not made known to the sons of humanity, as it was now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. In spirit, the nations are to be joint enjoyers of an allotment and a joint body, and joint partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the evangel 
of which I became the dispenser is in accord with the gratuity of the, and of the grace of God which is granted to me in accord with his powerful operations. Wow. <laughs> For the rest, brethren, whether whatever is true, whatever is grave, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is, ever is agreeable, whatever is renowned, if there is any virtue and if any applause be taking these into account, what you learned also and accepted and hear and perceive in me, these be put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8 through 9. We love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. That was a neat study. There's a fly there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a fly. Wow. Neat seeing them words, how they... Don't Tony looked them up and had that rolled out. Now, thanks guys for putting this together. Alicia and Judy, helping Marcia and I and Sterling put this together. Uh, they do a lot of work in that because I've watched and and I know the, the struggle it is to find something that will go with our verses. They look through a lot of articles to find something and, and I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. It takes a lot of a lot of commitment. Seven days a week, you know, it's, it's never ending. They don't take any day. They don't take any days off. Yeah, you know, stay with it. Anyway, <clears throat> your dumb dog's got her leash wrapped around a bone. Yeah, that's about this big. The bigger than what her body is, she could never pick that up. <laughs> the German Shepherd's bone, the an angel. Can, she he can't, can't. He can't eat either. It's a big one. It's one of them to get out of. The, it's been cooked or whatever. Anyway, we love you guys and thanks for hanging out with us. Yep. Time to go see I what God's you. got for us. Yeah, we love you guys. We'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Lord willing, we'll see you then. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.